Hi everyone, welcome. welcome. My, My name is Meredith, one of the FOP educators, and I am so excited to have you here today. We are going to be going through making a memory pillow. Um, but first, before we start that, I just want to shout out to Amy. Um, Ryan's on vacation this week, so it's just Amy in the background. So, so if you, if you have, have questions, questions or anything like that that you would like answered, feel free to type them in the chat and she will send them to me. And if we don't know the answer to it, we will get them answered for you. We'll come back and get them answered for you. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions along the way or you'd like to see something again, let me know. We'll do it again. This is a pretty self-explanatory project, but uh, it's, like, it's got a little bit of a twist on it with how it's constructed. And when it comes to personalizing it, it makes it takes doing, doing just a normal memory pillow and adding in a little extra that you can do directly on your screen. So we are going to, that's what we're going to go through today. So first off, I'm going to go through prepping your shirt and then we will go through setting up embroidery and doing all that. So I'm going to switch over my cameras here and bear with me today. Also, um, I have so many things I want to show you and not enough cameras. So I have my phone going. There is a little bit of feedback, but I believe it's only when I'm on my face screen. So just bear with me. We are aware of it. So I do apologize in advance for that. Um, but let's switch over here. So first, this is what we're this is what we're going for. Just a fun little memory pillow. But I like how it's up here in the top, where you can still use the collar. There's not any extra. Um, folds or anything, we are just going to open up the buttons to stuff it. So you don't have to have that overlay. If you had um, a pocket pillow or if you added in a zipper, we're going to use the buttons to our advantage with this. So let's start with our shirt. We just have a normal button down shirt right here. And I like to button it up at the very beginning just so I have an idea of where I'm going with it. And I like to make my pillows 14 or 16 inches. Um, 14 inches or 16 inches are my pillow forms that I use, but this could definitely be done in a, in a uh, rectangle size shape. Really just base it off of the pillow form that you have or whatever you would like to purchase. Um, I know your local craft stores have pillow forms. You can get them online, lots of different options there. So. What we're going to do first is we're going to cut our sleeves off. So let's do that first. And I just cut right here at the seam. Um, I don't worry too much about it. I'm just going to cut right at the seam right there. And then I'm going to save my sleeves. I'm going to show you, hopefully we'll have time and I'll get to show you another way. I hate to waste um, somebody's shirt, somebody, somebody's family member's shirt. So I want to use as much of it as I can. Um, so I will save the sleeves and we'll do something with them in a little bit. So once we cut the sleeves off, um, I am going to cut up the sides here. And again, just find that side seam and we're just going to cut straight up the side. We're going to most likely cut some of this off. So it's okay if it's not it doesn't need to be straight or anything. We'll straighten it all up when we get to cutting our finished size. Um, I also like to recommend when you are doing memory shirts, um, you will want to have the biggest shirt you can possible. Um, it gives you more, more fabric to work with. So if you, if you have options, definitely go with the bigger size if you can. So this is what you should have when you are done. So you've got the front of your shirt and the back of your shirt, no sleeves, and we have cut up the sides. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna add our, our little um, memory note, like this one here. We're gonna add this onto it. And this one only has one pocket on it. If you had a shirt that had two pockets, you could take the pocket off. You could embroider right over the pocket. It's completely up to you. If it was me, I would take one of the pockets off and embroider over that. I think I've done it before where I embroider over the pocket and it just it just looks a little weird. And if you don't have it straight with the pocket, it looks wonky, even though it may not be. So 
I like to either have a shirt with one pocket or if your shirt has two pockets, take one of the pockets off. It doesn't matter which side. That's completely your preference. So let's go over to the machine and we are going to put together our memory design. So for this one, I am using the 100 by 100 metal hoop and I have that selected up here on the screen. But if you needed to select that hoop options, you have all of your hoop options available right here. So when I go into Applique Creator, it's going to make the applique fit within that hoop size, which is going to be this white space right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Applique Creator, and you can find that at the bottom of your screen. And I'm going to come up to my shapes right here, select that. And you have different options. You could definitely do something like this. You could do just a ribbon on it. And let me show you that. Do a ribbon and add some uh, letters right in there for a name. If it was a military one or somebody who passed away from a certain cancer or something like that, you could do something like this and add a date or a name. Lots of different options there. I'm going to switch, though. And there's a little wavy one here with a flag or the shield. Lots of really cool options up there. And, but we're going to do a basic one today. There's a heart on there as well, but I'm just going to do a basic square today because that's what's going to fit within my 100 by 100 size that I have. So we're going to close that out. And this, remember, this white space is the space I have to work within. So I can actually make this just a little bit bigger. I want to get that to the border of my block, just like that. Oh, and I'm out of my hoop there. Get it just a little, oh, too big. You see that red line? I know I'm out of the hoop if it's that big. And I can also change this stitch. So here are some um, autofill stitches, and you could choose any of those that you wanted. But let me show you also, you can choose just, you can load your own stitch. The only thing with this is, let me find one that will stand out enough. Let me show you. So if you load a stitch, let me come back and put this on this one. And if I choose, I'm trying to find, oh, well, I guess that sort of works. Let me see if this one will show more. So if you look right up here, when I selected that stitch, it just does one stitch. It doesn't do the entire square. So you would just have to continue to add, and it's going to add more and more until it meets all the way around. We're not going to go that route today. I'm just going to choose one of the loaded autofill ones that's in here already. So let's choose, let's do this little starburst guy right here kind of looks like a little frame so that's what we're going to go with and once you have that set and you're happy with the size that it is and the outline i don't want to call it this one's not specifically a satin stitch but whatever stitch you want to finish it we will then hit okay down here at the bottom and that brings it into our screen so i want to just make sure that this guy is centered so I'm wondering, I'm seeing that red square. I think it's not going to be, yep, see, it's going to be too big. I didn't pay attention to that when I selected or when I changed it. So let's get rid of this guy. And the easy way to get rid of this is if you click and hold, if you have that design selected, click and hold, you can delete it right there. So let's go to do that again. We're going to go to Applicate Creator. And we're going to choose a square shape from Basics. There we go. Square shape. Let me choose my stitch first, and then I will make it a little bit bigger. So let's do that stitch. And I'm going to minimize that to get it out of the way. Then I'm just going to click on that corner and drag it out. And see, I don't have that red line there anymore, so I should be good to go. So we're going to click OK. And now that fits in there, and I don't have that red square anymore. Now we want to add in a phrase to it. So you could do a few different things with your phrases. Um, you could do a name with a date. You could just do a little phrase. You could do just the person's name. So many different options you have there. But you have different options of fonts as well. So if you click on the letter A over here, you, these are going to be all of your embroidery fonts. And it says on the side as well the size that they are. So these are 10 millimeters, 15, so forth. Because this is a smaller square, we want to keep our size of our font down just a little bit. 
So, and I'm, let me show you up this one too. You have your regular sewing stitch fonts as well. So those is an option you could use. I'm going to choose this bell 10 right there. And let me move this out of the way so you can see what I'm typing in. So for this one today, I'm probably just gonna do a name just for time's sake, because I wanna stitch this all out and do the complete shirt for you guys. So I'm gonna do love, and then we're just gonna stop there. And I'm gonna minimize. So that's my one there. You cannot enter and go down to a second line. You have to create separate, um, separate lines and then put them together. So let's actually make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to delete this one since this is all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the bell 15. And it's gonna stay in capital unless I select to lowercase, so just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna hit love and then we're going to make that its own design. And then I'm gonna hit that bell 15 one more time. And you notice I've got a new square here, so a new place to type. And I'm just going to type in my name. Just like that. And we can move that around, make sure it fits right in there. Yeah. And then that. So we have our name and that. But I feel like we could add something else. Like that's kind of boring to me. So another great resource you have is you can send over a design from the software or you can choose one from the library right here. So we're gonna go to the flower with the, with the little circle globe and that's gonna pull up the My Sonet library. So as it's loading, I'm connected and logged in. I'm gonna go to search a design. So I'm gonna search for a heart and get an H E A R T. And then I'm going to hit the little magnifying lens right there. And it's going to give me all of my options that have a heart included in them. So if we go back up here to the top, we can sort by um, design name, size, stitch count. I'm going to go by design size so that I get my smallest ones. I don't need a big heart. Remember, I'm working within a 100 by 100 hoop, so we want it to be a smaller size. And so this is the one I used right here. So we're just going to select those little hearts and it's put it on the screen over there. So just like that. And we can move all of this around just to place it where we want it. And once you're happy with where it's at, there we go, like that. We are going to stitch out. But let me show you a couple other things. If you wanted to add in um, multiple phrases or like a double line, like the one I had. Let me see if I can show you. Like this one here has two rows of lines. Um, and it, say I wanted to combine those so I could move them all together. Once I get, trying to move this guy down. Once I get these placed where I want them, what you can do is this little stacks what squares right up here. We're going to select that. And we are going to select multiple. So if I hit select multiple, those two right there, and then we're going to group them together. Say I wanted to move them also in the order of stitching out. Say I wanted them to stitch out before the hearts. This, oh, this little guy right here moves it around the arrows on the side there. So you have lots of flexibility with moving your design around and creating exactly what you want. Um, can you adjust the spacing between the letters? No, not on this one in particular. If you're wanting to adjust specific spacing on letters, I would suggest doing that in the software um, with the fonts that are in the software before and then sending it over to the machine. You can easily still create this applique square or whatever shape and then bring in your design that you created in the MySonet software and put them all together. So that's how you would adjust the spacing between the letters in that way. So once I get this, so now this is all one and I can move the entire thing together. So again, if you had multiple lines, you would type out each line, line them up and then group them together so that you can move them around. So, oh, it keeps wanting to do that. And say I wanna get these guys centered. So now I still have multiple select on up here. If you don't select multiple, if you don't deselect that, it will continue to select all of them. So I want to center this so that it's in the center of my square. So we're going to come down here to edit design and we're going to hit the center of our little wheel right here. So now I know all of that's centered and I'm happy with this. So we're going to send it to embroider. We're going to go to stitch out. 
And I already have my 100 by 100 metal hoop selected. And there we go. So that's going to get lined up there. But what I'm going to show you first is how to, how we're going to put this all together. So I have my metal hoop and I have a sticky stabilizer on here. It's just a sticky tear away. Um, you could easily do this with a normal um, spring loaded hoop, but I find it easier with metal hoops because we're going to be able to secure it down. So if you have not played with metal hoops before, this would be a great use for them. So what I'm going to do, I could easily find the center of my hoop if I wanted to, but I'm just going to get this guy eyeballed because my shirt has these lines on it. I want my applique to line up with that. So even if this, these lines were not straight, but my applique was straight, it would still look off. So let's work with our shirt and make it look all the same here. So I'm going to just eyeball stick it on there. And this is what's great about the sticky tearaway. So I can feel the hoop right here is where it's at. And I can tell that, it, that my line sort of goes up. So I'm going to lift up my stable, lift up my shirt just a little bit and realign it and smooth all this out. And here's my edge here. And I can tell that this is pretty well straight. I'm going to adjust the top of this just a little bit there. So that's really just what I'm feeling for making sure. And it may not be exact, but what we're going to do here in a minute is we are going to project this on. So we'll be able to see if we are straight even more, but I like to get this as close just straight on the hoop as I can. So once we have that set where we want it, where are my magnets? Here they are. I'm going to take my magnets. And this is why I really like this magnetic hoop is I can now, yes, I'm stabilized with my sticky stabilizer, but I can stabilize even more with my magnets and my shirt in place. So there we go. There's our clean space to work within and our design is going to be right in here. So we're going to take this over to our machine and I'm going to show you projection now move this over here. Okay, so I'm actually going to back back out of edit embroidery. And I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can sort of see what I'm doing on my needle. I've got another view, but just for this for this purpose here. So I'm going to first before I backed out of embroidery stitch out mode, and I'm going to choose this little pyramid triangle symbol right up there looks like a little projection down and we're going to hit on. That's going to again move my arm over now and it wants me to put my hoop on. So let's get, I am using the embroidery foot today also and embroidery thread on the top and bottom. So we're going to slide this on and hit OK. And let me, I'm going to move my lighting down. I did adjust this yesterday. So my LED work light, I'm going to turn that down so that now let me switch back over here so you can see this. And I'm going to adjust something in a minute. So I'm really bright in here. Oh, go back. And I'm turning my LED light down so you see that it got dimmer. And I can see a little bit of my projection, but I know you guys can't see that. So we are going to Go back to our, oh, this one here, sorry about that. We're gonna come back over here. We're gonna change our background color. So I'm gonna be changing this, oh, this one here. I'm gonna change my background color. So I'm gonna select this white here, but I'm gonna switch it over to my needle so you can see as this changes. Now you can see my projection there and you can see the bottom corner of my stitching is right there. So let's hit okay and then Come back over here. We can move this around to see where it's at completely in this space. So when you look at it now, we can just see this bottom corner here, but say I want to see the whole thing. We're going to move the arrows around here. So I'm, you're actually going to be moving it opposite. And if you notice my little um, icon uh, cursor button is moving up here. So we're going to just move it up until we're to the top. Or close to it. Come on. There it goes. And then I'm going to move it over a little bit. And again, if I want it to go right, I'm going to hit the left arrow. So you're really working backwards. Come on. I'm hitting it and then I'm, I'm getting 
click happy over here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now under the machine. Here's the top part of my applique right here and it comes down the side. So I can see where this is at and where it's gonna line up and roughly decide if I think I'm gonna be happy with it right here. So I can tell that this stitch line is gonna be pretty well straight with the lines um, on the shirt. So I'm happy with this placing. So we're gonna to go to stitch out now on the screen. Stitch out, we're gonna click okay. And that's gonna bring us into embroidery mode. My projection is still on. What it's gonna do first is it's gonna do the placement stitch for our applique. So if you've never done applique before, you're gonna get a little crash course. I have my cut, um, cut threads and there's a reason I have that on. I'll get to that in a minute. So just wanted me to cut my thread. So for applique, you're always going to have a placement stitch first. And this is that stitch here. I'm a little crooked, but we're going to, it'll be all right for this. It looks like I'm pretty straight on this side. So yeah, that's even over there. So, so the first stitch it's going to do, I'm going to turn my projection off also here. Clean them off so you can see a little bit more. I have a placement stitch down. This is going to be where I'm going to put my fabric. And I didn't. I'm out on my cutter on, so that's why I can't pull that out. This is the space I'm going to put my fabric. So I already have a fabric picked out over here. Got a pretty blue that matches. And we are going to lay that over top of the square that it just stitched out. And then we're going to hold it in place. We're going to hit start. We're going to push start. I am working really hard. Little side note while this stitches out. I um, have been informed of somebody's little pet peeve, and so I am working really, really hard to not say hit the buttons because we aren't hitting our machine. We are pushing the button or pressing the button. So I am catching myself more saying that. So. so it's doing a reinforced stitch around. This is just again a running stitch that it's doing all the way around, and this is tacking my fabric in place. And what I'm going to do afterwards is I'm going to cut close, and this is going to be my applique. So, Amy said, speak extra loudly while the machine is running. I will do that. I'm going to hit my scissors because I do have my thread cutter turned off, and that way I can pull my hoop out to cut around this. What I found also when you are doing um, a metal hoop and you have an applique, your scissors want to magnetize to these magnets. So you just have to make it work for you. Let me switch this. I'm going to move over here so you can see me cut this applique out a little bit better. So I like to get a good pair of applique scissors. So either little straight double or single curve ones here, or there is little duck bill ones as well. Um, different options. I I've had people ask in the past, they're like, why do I need one over the other? And there's, you'll find different reasons for needing certain types of applique scissors. So um, I like to have them all. Um, for this one right here, I just need straight point to be able to get up in there and get those straight, straight lines. But if I had like a flower or something like a heart where it indented in and getting up and around, um, sometimes having the smaller applique or the double curve applique are really nice as well. So you'll find a use for all of them, trust me. So we're just cutting close to our applique here, our running stitch, but making sure we don't cut our stitches. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to trim the rest of this down too. I didn't get as close as I, as close as I want to. So that's what's nice about these scissors also, is you can go back in and get just a little bit closer. So any questions so far, y'all following along? We'll get to the construction of it here in just a minute, but. Okay, so we're gonna take this back to our machine and we're going to embroider it out. So let's get this back under here, making sure that my shirt is out of the way. I can't tell you. I have done that a couple of times where I was not mindful of my shirt and it got embroidered. Um, it was stuck underneath there and got embroidered on. And that's the worst thing. So 
we are going to hit, we are going to touch play. And it's just going to do, yep, it wants to be a cut. It's going to do this applique stitch. I say applique loosely because it's not a satin stitch, but it's more of like a decorative applique. So I would consider this one more of a raw edge applique um, because it's not covering all of the edges completely. It's sort of it's just doing a fun little decorative one. So it doesn't, I didn't have to get it exactly as close as I did, but it's okay for this one. So we're going to let this run really quick. And once this is, I may stop it a little bit early. I was hoping this one wouldn't take as long, but we'll see. Let me know if y'all have any questions or anything while this is going that I can show you on the screen or explain better. Any questions you might have in your process. If you have done memory pillows before, um, have you done one like this or have you done other things or, or what do you turn, I would say, the extra parts of your shirts into when you are doing something for somebody? I hate to waste all of that extra part of the shirt. So. Oh, that's great, Vicki. Vicki said, I saved the sleeves, but I make a four by six zipper bag that she can take it with her in her purse. Oh, I love that. That's a great option. Um, I am gonna, I've got, hopefully we'll have time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make time, y'all, for the extra thing I wanna show you um, that I do with the extra parts. Where's the speed control for embroidery? That is a great question. So when I started out in education, I came from Who's Bar Viking brand. Like that was the that was the brand that I worked with fully. And when I switched over to education and I started working with Bob, I felt so dumb asking, where is the speed adjustment? So for the speed adjustment on a Bob, it is on the side of the machine where you put the plug into the machine. It is not up at the top like some of the Peace Corner Viking owners are used to. So that's a great question. <laughs> are there any other random questions like that? We don't always take random questions, but I am willing to take random questions today to fill this time because I really want to, I want to get to the letters and show you why I have the um, thread cutter off. So any other questions? That's, I love that idea, Vicki. I'm really probably going to be making some zipper bags now. That's a really great idea. What does everybody else do with their with their loved one's shirts? Besides making a pillow even, like what, what do you make out of them? I know some people have made quilts and do patchwork quilts with them. So I know people that have made bears before or some sort of stuffed animal. So let us know, give me some more inspiration for what to do. I really like this stitch. I haven't ever done this before on an applique. I will show it to you here in just a minute up close. I really like how this looks. Um, Kathy from Hudson, Florida. My hubby passed away last year, so I'm picking up. Oh, yay. Well, not yay that he passed away. I apologize. But I'm glad this is hopefully giving you some inspiration to want to do something with them. Um, I know sometimes it's hard for people to, to do their own loved one's shirts. Um, but it, it's a nice little memory in the process to be able to do that and still, still have that memory of them. So that's great. Oh, I love that idea. You made aprons for the grandkids. That's a really neat idea. I like that. I've made um, for um, my one of my younger cousins. She was younger when my grandma passed away. And I made sort of like a small lovey blanket. So it wasn't like a big, I, I don't even want to call it a blanket. It was more like a quilt. It was like a smaller size quilt. Um, more of like one that you would just hold on to that she could have when she slept and things like that. So it doesn't even have to be something big that you're doing. Um, I've made a cushion using a V-neck cardigan. I stabilized, yep, yes. So that is a great point. Let, that's a great point. I'm not sure the name of who that was, Amy. 
that somebody said they stabilized with iron on first before constructing the cushion. So let's talk about that. I am using a, um, a woven shirt. So there is no stretch with this shirt. I don't have to worry about it stretching once I'm done. But if you are doing a polo shirt or um, a v-neck cardigan or anything like that, you want to stabilize your shirts before you do anything to them. I What I will do if um, I did a live recently on t-shirt quilts, so if some of y'all watched it, you probably already know. I still do the same process that I mentioned earlier where I cut the sleeves off and I cut up the sides and then I will stabilize the part that within the size that I know. I will use more stabilizer than what I need to fit in that space. But um, you want to use an iron-on stabilizer with t-shirts. You could do the same process with t-shirts and do a pocket in the back, a pocket opening in the back. So this one's done. I'll come back to that in just a minute. I'm going to keep this going here. So I'm going to switch my thread here to a white and we're going to do the letters. So the reason I have my thread cutter turned off is when you are doing, I'm trying to find the opening to my thread here. When you are doing um, smaller letters, you don't necessarily want it to cut after each letter um, because what it will do is it will not on the back side and it has such a short distance to move to the next letter that sometimes it doesn't have a long enough tail and it bunches up underneath a little bit more because it's closer together. So when I have smaller letters, I will turn my thread cutter off so that it continues to go from one letter to the next. But let me show you something on the screen here. We want to I don't want to hit start every time for one of these letters. If you look right here, I hear all of my letters and my thread colors. I don't want to do that. So what you can do is you can hit merge. So merge is going to put all of those colors. And you notice I did not hit merge before. I did not touch merge before when I was doing the applique because all three of these would have been combined and we needed those stops. But once it was done with the applique, I'm going to select merge. And that's going to do all of these colors up until you'll notice the very last red, the red hearts in this without stopping continuously. It confused me at first because it didn't put them all together. They're all still listed, but trust me, it will continue to sew without having to touch start over and over again. So let's start this one here. So that's why with smaller letters, oh, see, it wants me to cut my little tail. I don't have a tail though, so we're gonna push start. Um, so with smaller letters, I like to turn that thread cutter off. You'll see that it leaves a little jump stitch, but those are easy to cut out afterwards. Um, you'll see when it gets done with this L, it just jumped over. So I didn't have to touch start again. It didn't put the needle down and cut the thread. It just moves from one letter to the next seamlessly. So going back to shirts, um, when it comes to anything that's knit, you want to have it stabilized and you want to have it stabilized before you cut it to your finished size. So I, if this was a knit shirt, I would have stabilized this entire piece before I even did this applique. Um, because even with the stabilizer or the applique, I, I still want that extra. What I will do though, is when I know it moves down, there's that big jump stitch right there and it will stitch over all of that. So what I like to do is I like to just cut, I like to catch it if I can, if you don't, that's okay. And cut that so that I don't have that long jump stitch underneath all of my stitching there. And then we'll, touch play again. So did I, oh, it pulled out. Oh, there we go. I stopped it too soon. So here's a good thing I'm going to show you. Say your thread stops. It, it's just not in there. It's not in my needle and I need to go back some stitches. So we're going to go to stitch out progress right here and go to, we're just going to hit back. I'm actually going to go back until, cause it looks like it didn't get any of that P. So I'm going to go all the way back to where that comma is. Come on, I'm getting there. And 
then I'm going to come back down. So now I know it's going to start right there and I'm going to re-thread here. And for those that may not have the true automatic needle threader, let me show you this. This is one of my favorite things. I'm going to push the automatic needle threader and it's going to thread it all for me. One of my favorite features on some of our machines. So now we're going to select start and now we should be good to go. There it goes and keep going. Okay. So I hope that explains knits for you. Um, if you have any more questions when it comes to the knit, please let me know. Um, let's go back. I've got a couple questions now. So, Oh, so Karen said I have ties and I, Oh, I'm sorry. That was me. Karen said she has ties and she needs to figure out what to do with them. So can I tell you, and I will find a picture of it because I gave it to my mom. Actually, I took ties and made a crazy patchwork pillow. So I took them and it's kind of like a quilt as you go type of crazy patchwork. I will see if I can find a picture of that Karen and post that for you. Um, but that's what I did with ties. And I still added in like a little memory, um, applique as well. It's a little hard with the name and so on. So I will find a picture of that and if not get one and post that. Susan said, um, I made purse organizers. There you go. That's a great idea. Those inserts that you can put into purses where you can organize, it sort of breaks up the big part of the purse a little bit more. That's a great idea. Somebody said, do you stabilize the applique before attaching it to the shirt? So you could, I did not on this one because it's just a, it's just a cotton fabric and this is a woven you could definitely, though, do a feasible applique. Um, I did not. I just put my applique fabric down, and it did that running stitch around it, and then I cut close to it. But you definitely could stabilize the applique beforehand. When the cutting is turned off, is there a tie-off between letters? No. So that's the whole reason why I wanted to turn the thread cutter off is because I don't want it to tie off because what it does when you have smaller letters that are close together, there's not enough space for it to move from one to the next. And sometimes the thread, Amy said louder, please. I'm sorry. Sometimes the thread will there won't be a long enough tail to start your embroidery over again. So it'll start embroidering, but there's no thread there. So I like to turn off and then just come back in and we're going to clip these jump stitches once we're completely done. Um, could you have also, yes. So that's another great point. So let me change this out for me real quick here. We're going to cut that and I'm going to switch to my red thread really quick. So yes, if I need to repeat any of that again, Amy, let me know because of the sound. Sometimes it feeds out the stitching of the machine, but today because of my setup, I don't think it's doing as well as it normally does. So thank you all for your patience with the audio today. Let's cut that little tail there. So we're gonna finish this heart and then we'll move on to the next step. So no, so another thing that you could do it somebody said um real quick let me go back it said could you oh it doesn't oh my thread broke let's see here what's going on i think i had a cut in my thread that's why i did that real life issues here real life situations oh i didn't get that one there so we're gonna play there yes there we go okay somebody said could you have hit the sixth color on the list and go back to the beginning yes you could have done that um but i wanted to just show how you could back up so many stitches so that if it did not break my thread at the beginning of that letter and it was further into the letter that's how you would hit those touch those numbers to go back so many stitches but yes you could have touched the sixth letter because that was the p and it would have started over at the beginning there somebody said do your stitches come undone without the tie off no mine don't and what you could do to make sure of that also if, if you're concerned about that is you could use spray check and you could put underneath not on the top side but on the back side you could put a little bit of spray not spray is that is it? No, 
Yeah, it's gray check. I'm sorry, I'm not thinking of the right word. Um, you can put a little bit of gray check on the underside where you know those, uh, where it cuts from, or where it switches from one to the next where you cut to ensure that they didn't come undone. But I haven't ever had issues of them coming undone um, afterwards. So no, but that's a great question. So any other freebie questions? that may not be on topic that I can answer today for you before we are just about finished with this embroidery. And we'll go to the assembly of the shirt and y'all it's super quick and easy. It's just understanding the collar part of it. So I'm gonna show that maybe once, maybe once or twice so that you can really understand how that, the folding of the collar works. That's where it not can get confusing, but you can just be like, wait, how does that go? And it doesn't naturally flow right, so. Finish this out. It's almost done here. It says we have one minute. Let me show you that too. I love this little timer. They brought that timer back. One minute left and it'll be done. And I love that you can sort of see the progression too on the wheel. So that dark space is getting smaller as it goes. This is about done here. There we go. We're gonna touch our scissors because I know that it did not cut. And if I pull that off, I'm gonna have a long tail from the top and the, the bobbin thread. So there we go, there. Let me show you on this camera. There is our applique right there. And then we'll just cut those little jump stitches and, and it's great, look at that, I love that. So we're gonna take our magnets off here. And because this was just a square, it should tear off of our tear away, sticky tear away right here real easy and we can I'm going to go back in later and I'll take out all the rest of that but for time's sake we're going to keep moving here so now what we want to do is we want to have if we were to fold this where the sleeves go and sew this you still have this opening here so we sort of want to sew that closed but make it a part of what our shirt's going to be if we did it right on the shoulders, you see how that goes down at an angle? Pillows, pillows are not made like that. Pillows are made straight. So we wanna make it straight. You see how this one goes across straight. So these right here, if you can see these two pieces, this is actually where the shoulder is, but we have shifted the fabric to make it work for us. Um, somebody asked, what embroidery thread are you using? I'm just using Robus and Anton embroidery thread. So what we're gonna do, is we are going to, I've got my front and the back separated. Let me move this pillow out of the way. Got a little bit, let me see if I can make this a little bit wider too, bear with me. There we go, just a little bit. So I have the back, that's this way in the back and the front here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of find where that straight, where a straight line would be. And I'm gonna just fold under enough until, let me button this. You wanna have this top, top button done as well. Come on, because we're gonna sew around it here in just a minute, like that. So we wanna find where the top would be, or where we have a straight edge. But we want a little bit of overlap, and this takes a little bit of shifting, and I've got my hands sort of in between and I'm adjusting and moving things around a little bit so that everything lies smoothly like that. And then what we'll end up doing is we'll end up having this right up here. This is basically where this lines up is where our top is gonna be. But So I've got this all smoothed out here and I can feel I don't have any bumps, but what I want you to see, let me unbutton this so you can see. I wanna have enough of this shirt on the underside, so this is the back that I have folded under. Do you see that like that? I have a little bit folded under. I wanna have enough that I can catch it when we're gonna sew around the collar here like this. So if this is together, I wanna have enough of that back side of the shirt to be able to catch, and I've got more than enough here. I know that I'm gonna do a 16 by 16 inch pillow, so I've got plenty enough space here. 
So I actually, the fold comes down to here. So, and we're gonna pin that in place. I'm just gonna do a couple and hold that up so you guys can see that. And then I'll do it one more time, just so y'all have an idea. And it won't all completely be smooth, but when we go to sew, the space that we're sewing within is, it'll be, you'll smooth it out as you go. So then when I'm done, this will be how my pillow is. So here's again, I just stabbed myself with that. Here's where this goes right here. And this will be the top of my pillow. And I've got this little opening. We're going to sew that closed. So let me show you that one more time. Does this all make, does this visually make sense to everybody so far? We'll go through it once more though. So let's take these out. It's really just this folding and making sure you get it correct. So what I like to do is I like to lay it out completely like this and my collar is folded down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find where I think the straight, basically where the underside of the collar is, find that right there. And all I'm doing is I'm pushing that backside under just a little bit, just enough that when this is all the way together, and I sew around the collar because we're going to sew right up here along the seam. You won't even see our stitching really. Get this little button. Come on, little button. Can never get these guys going right. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So that when we sew around this right here, we have fabric to catch underneath. And I also am sort of making sure that my tag is straight. We don't want our tag to be wonky when we do that. So here's our shirt just like that. Does that all make sense, everybody, before I move on? Because once I sew it together, there's no going back. So I'm going to, again, put pins right in here. And I've made sure that my fabric underneath is smooth and it's laying flat. We don't want any little bumps up in there. And I'm going to start here and sew this way. So you'll notice that all of my pins, we're gonna undo these because we're gonna sew underneath this collar. All of my pins are going to where I can easily pull them out. So once you get it set, we're gonna lift up that collar just a little bit there. And we're gonna pin there because what we're gonna do, we're gonna sew all the way down and around that collar seam, back up and over this way. So I'm gonna put one here to hold that all in place. And then another one here, just like that. Okay, if everybody's good with this, we are gonna switch to the actual sewing part of it. So let me show the screen. I'm going to go back to embroidery edit and I'm gonna switch to sewing. So right up here, that little zigzag, I can sew with my embroidery arm on, I love that. It's like having an extension table. We are going to take off our embroidery foot and I'm just using sort of like an open toe foot. I want to be able to see as I'm sewing this. So I've got that open a little bit there. So I am just, I just have a straight stitch selected. I need to change my thread to a sewing thread and I've got a thread that's going to blend in with my shirt. It is a blue thread. And once I get my shirt up there, I think you'll You'll see a little bit better. So I'm going to switch to sewing thread in the top and the bobbin. Put that there. And switch this out. Thank you. Amy said the sewing star, but it's honestly just what I had on hand when I was putting all this together. Okay. So let me get my shirt laid out here. So what we're gonna do, we are going to sew around the top edge and there's no rhyme or reason to the, to the distance. I'm just sewing probably about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch off of my seam here. And I'm gonna go all the way around and it wants my IDT on and I love that it prompted me on mine because I'm so forgetful about putting that on. And then I'm halfway through something and I'm like, oh my gosh, that would have made my life so much easier. So I love that the machine will prompt me for that. And I want to stop with my needle in the down position, take our pin out, and keep going. So we're 
just going all the way around until we get up to the collar up here. Again, making sure my shirt is flat. So I'm gonna go just a little bit more. Uh, one more, there we go. So now what we're gonna do, you see this little seam? We're gonna sew all the way around this seam. But there are so many buttons on this shirt, y'all. <laughs> I don't usually have this many buttons on a shirt. Okay. We're going to sew all the way around right here. Again, making sure that our fabric underneath is smooth. And I'm just staying close to that line right there. Somebody said, is there a reason to change from embroidery thread to sewing thread? Where's the difference? Yes. So for this in particular, I would definitely switch to sewing thread. Embroidery thread is not made for construction. It is made for embroidery, for decorative stitching. It's not made to hold things together long term. But let me show you real quick. So this is where our, our two pieces meet, where it buttons down. We're just going to continue sewing along here. That's a great question. I would definitely switch to um, sewing thread because I'm sure this shirt is not the shirt pillow that you make is not just going to sit on a shelf. It is going to be used and loved and it's just a great source of comfort. And so you want to have a thread that is going to hold up over time. So just getting all this smooth here. Try not to stab myself with a needle at the same time. I've got one underneath my hand over here. There we go. But that's a great question. Yes, I would strongly suggest switching to sewing thread when you are actually constructing this together. So we're just going to sew all the way back down the other side here. I hit the wrong button, touch the wrong button. I need to touch my scissors. Oh, did it go right? One. Maybe it's because I let's try that. Let's go over there. Let's see. Let's cut these from here now. We'll see what it does. Okay. So let me show you what this looks like. So this is where we sew all the way down and around. So now when we go to cut it, that's held in place and we can get a straight edge. For our pillow now we don't have that curved edge where the shoulders are we're using some of the back to get that straight edge for a pillow but we're going to do one more seam because we have this opening right here you, you could leave it open if you wanted to but i like to secure it down so we're going to sew right here in in the collar inside there okay so let's switch here and you're not going to be able to get all the way to the edge. So there still will be a little bit of an opening, but it's so small. I like to just get as far as I can without straining anything. And I lower my needle down right in there. And so I'm not all the way to the edge over there, but I'm pretty close. And again, just making sure we're smooth on the back side. And again, I'm not gonna get all the way to the other edge, but I'm gonna get as close as I can. And then we're gonna pull that out. Oops, I got thread stuck on me. All right, so, come on. Then we can fold our collar back down and do all those buttons and whatnot. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut this down to the size that we need. And what I like to do is I like to find where my top is going to be, where that straight edge is. And again, I normally do my pillows, um, 14 inch pillows by 14 or 16 by 16. It's completely up to you. What you could do now also is you could cut away this excess piece that's in here. You don't have to leave it in there. Um, that's probably what I will do, but for now I'm just going to leave it for time's sake. So I like to have a 16 by 16 ruler. This is actually 16 and a half and a 14 because those are the ones I'm going to use the most. What I'm going to do, and also another thing I do with my shirts when I do my memory pillows is I don't, um, I cut them to the finished size of the pillow. I like my pillows to look a little bit fuller 
um, when the pillow forms are in there. So some people will, if they want a 16 by 16 pillow, they'll do their pillow forms or their, their pillow cover 16 and a half by 16 and a half. I like mine to be a little bit fuller. So I'm just going to do this 16 by 16. So this half of 16 is eight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my buttons up along this eight line and make sure we're lined up up here. I'm not so much worried about this collar because it is higher than our pillow, but the top edge right there, we're going to have that lined up and our eight lining up in our buttons. And this is why, again, I suggest getting the biggest size shirt you can, because even though I cut so close to the edge of those sleeves, I have just a little bit of room on the sides. I did one the other day and it was actually a hair too small, but I made it work. So I've got my rotary cutter and we're just cutting on, I'm just doing the two sides there first, because if I go all the way around, I'm gonna have 16 and a half. So what I'm gonna do now that I've got that one side, I'm gonna turn this and line my half up up there. So I've got a little bit half over here and a half over there. And do not cut the way I'm cutting. I just have it at this angle for you guys, but you should always cut away from yourself here. So you'll notice also I have a button right here. We're actually going to take this button out because I won't be able to sew right there. And don't cut like this either. Again, I would normally turn all this before I did this. You get a better cut too. So... There is our pillow shape right there. So what we're going to do really quick is we're going to take this button out because I will not be able to sew um, down the sides there. So normally what I like to do to finish these is I like to serge them. Um, but I know not everybody has a serger, so you have another option as well. I'm trying to get all these little threads out of here. Let's cut that. You have another option. You have on your machine a um, seam and overcast stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these right sides together and I'm going to line up my corners here. And this is why I like to serge also because sometimes I've got these little jaggy edges. So, but we're going to make it work for today. And I will line up my corner pieces here because if I just let this fall down the way it wants to with that collar in there, it's not accurate. So, um, Susan said, I leave it open behind the collar so the grandkids have a place to, oh, I love that idea. Have a place to hide their treasures. That's a great idea, Susan. <laughs> That's cute. It's not a huge opening in there, so it's not like they're hiding so much in there for those that are curious. It's just a little bit. So I like to get those corners done first, and then what I'll do is I want to get this flat. Normally, again, I'll cut all of this out, but for time's sake, we're going to leave it in there. So I want to make sure that it all lays flat and pin that all in place. And I will pin also right here where that fold over piece is. And there's a couple more over here. And then what we'll do is we are going to do a seam and overcast stitch. So there is a seam stitch, an overcast stitch, and a seam and overcast stitch. The difference between them, or why we're using a seam and overcast stitch today, is because we are putting two pieces of fabric together, so that's our seam, and then our overcast. When you are just doing a seam where you don't need to clean up the edges of your fabric, you would just use a normal straight stitch. When you are doing an overcast, you if you had one piece of fabric that frayed and you wanted to clean that up, that would be your overcast. You're not sewing this piece to anything, so you don't need a seam and overcast. For this, we are putting two pieces of fabric together, our seam, and we are, need to clean up the edges, so our overcast. So if you look here, are they... They are on right here, overcast. On utility stitches, one two right there. Go away. These are your overcast stitches. And you can tell the difference between them by touching the um, question mark and then the stitch and you have this little pop up. Or if you hit the eye down here at the bottom, it's going to tell you. So this is a closed overlock for sewing seam 
Seams and overcast stretch fabrics in one step. This one here is for patching, sewing hems, sewing seams, and overcasting. So that's another one there. There's, they tell you all what they're for. So this is a stretch one, lots of different options. There's multiple that work for everything too. We are gonna do this one right here, the number eight for patching, sewing hems, seams, and overcasting. That's the one we're gonna do today. So I'm not gonna go all the way around this, but I'm just gonna show you what that looks like just for time's sake, because we are at time, but I wanna show you one more little thing. So I'm sort of right on the edge over here. That way it catches the edge of my fabric so that I don't have the, um, my fabric frame. So if you had a polo or a knit material, you would use um, the knit one. But for this one, since it's not, we're gonna do that. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna show you what this looks like so you've got an idea. No, let's see, let's switch to this one, see. You can see a little bit more in there what that looks like. It doesn't help that I did a thread to match. Let's try this one here. Can you all see that stitch right there? So that way it's keeping my edges from fraying more and it's putting it all together. So once that's done, I'm gonna show you, let me, I'm gonna switch here. So once that's done, you will be able to undo your buttons. You don't have to worry about undoing them beforehand um, because you can easily undo them from the back side. And this is what you have. You flip it right side out and you shove your pillow in there and it fits perfectly. And then you button it right back up. So there you go. I love it, y'all. I hope that y'all um, learned a new way to use your memory um, or use a family member's uh, garments to create something. But I wanna show you one more thing. I hope if y'all, don't mind hanging with me for about 15 more minutes. I'm gonna show you one more thing. I like to, what I like to do with the excess um, material, but I've gotten some really great ideas from everybody else, is I will cut a heart. And it is cut with pinking, sear, pinking scissors um, or there's the rotary blades that have the wave. So either way, and I have two of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a raw edge sew around it. And I will take a ribbon sometimes. You can do this with or without a ribbon and you can make an ornament with it, something they could hang, or you could just leave it without a ribbon and it could just be something they can hold on to and, and feel hopefully some comfort. So um, does the stitch require a different foot? Um, for this one, it, uh, it knows I have the star. It was fine with me. It's recommended the three foot. I was using the star, the sewing star foot, but I mean, for this one, it has a recommended foot. I use something different. It's okay. It didn't yell at me, so it'll be all right. So let's sew this together really quick. Oh, let me switch this one. Okay, so what I will do is I will start on a side seam. I don't like to start in the middle or at the point because we are going to add in. So I'm gonna go back just to a normal straight stitch. And I'm actually going to switch with this foot here. So I've got a better guide. You can do this any distance from the edge that you like. I like to do it. I sort of just gauge it off the edge of the foot to give myself enough space. So I just start sewing. I get up to my point and my needle is in the down position so I can easily turn my presser foot raised up and I can turn and I can keep going around. So, and again, this does not have to be perfect because we are going to put some batting in it and it's going to puff up anyway. So just like that. And it's just a normal heart shape. You could do, you know, any kind of shape you really want it to. But again, I use pinking shears so that it doesn't continue to fray on me. So I'm coming back around. So here's where I started and here's where I am there. I'm gonna raise my foot up, but my needle is still down. And I'm gonna take some polyfill. I cut this tail here. And I'm going to shove it in this opening. 
it's a little opening, but we're going to make it work. It's a small little pillow we're making, so it doesn't have to have too much in it. And I'll shove it in there a little bit more. Just do little bits at a time. Don't try and do too much at once. Oh, and I just slid all that underneath, not even in it. There it goes. And I'm going to do just a little bit more. You don't want to overfill it either because it's going to be more difficult to sew the rest of it closed. So just a little bit of fluff in there. Once you get that in there, we're going to put our presser foot back down and we're going to sew the rest of the way. Just like that. We'll cut those. And there's our little pillow. And if you had, let me... There's your little heart pillow. And what I like to do also is I don't want to waste those buttons either. That button we just cut off, you can use that button and you can tuft, do a little tuft. And there you go. And you have a little extra piece. You, like I said, you could add a ribbon so that it could be an ornament. You could just leave it as is. And it's just something extra that somebody can have and hold on to for that, um, for that comfort, hopefully. So if there are not any other questions, um, Amy's going to send me the next Facebook Live, so hopefully <laughs> here they are. Um, but yes, if you continue to have questions, feel free to type them in. There will not be written instructions for this. I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory. You can go back and you can watch this live again. You can ask questions, comments, things like that. Um, I'm always here to answer those. So just let me know if there's something I can explain more to you. Um, but I'll be watching those for the next couple the next week or so. So if anybody watches it later, we can still answer those questions. Um, the next Foth Live is going to be May 2nd with Mickey, who will be sharing down and dirty tips and tricks for sewing, just her hacks for doing different types of different types of sewing. Each educator has their own things that work best for them. And so I, I love when they like to share their tips and tricks because everybody's are different. So Mickey's going to be doing that and that's going to be on May 2nd. That's in two weeks, not next week in two weeks on Thursday. And that's going to be at 3 PM Eastern, 2 PM central. The next my Sonet live is going to be Wednesday, May 8th with Kathy Fromm. This is going to be her part two of, of two, um, for cross stitch lessons. So she did a great one. Last week, if you missed it, it's still available to watch on the My Sonnet Facebook page or on YouTube. And so come and check out her second one. And that's going to be on May 8th, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. So I think that's about it. But thank you all again. I hope that um, you've been encouraged to want to take those, those shirts from your loved ones that have since passed and make something that can hopefully give you or some family members some comfort. So thank you. And I'll see you next time.